How's it going, everybody? This is Rob Novacast back with a, another video for you guys, or at least another review. With this one, um, I'm going to be reviewing Spider Man 2 or Sam Raimi's Spider Man 2, which came out on 2004, directed by, of course, Sam Raimi, written by Stan Lee, Stephen Dykto, hopefully I said that name correctly, many others, um, starring um, Tobey Maguire, Christian Dunst, Alfred. Molina and many more now okay where do I even begin with this um because I mentioned that especially with some of the casting it's it, it was phenomenal with a lot of the casting it was it was you know kind of picked really well um Christian Dunst is Mary Jane uh, unfortunately I have to continue with what I said before with the fact that she does jack in this she is not, I will say, like, we're trying to be, like, kind of an emotional lead or, like, the emotional pull or influence for the character. Okay, then I get that. But, like, when it comes down to her doing anything besides scream or be the damsel, I'm sorry. I kind of, I'm not a fan. I kind of, I, 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 again, I really wish there was a little bit more with this character. And I, it just sucks that I have to say that. Um... This time around, besides uh, William, I th believe it was William Defoe who played um, Norman or the Green Goblin. This time around, especially with the um, the villain, we got Alfred Molina, who I'm not gonna lie, does a really good, like really freaking good Doc Ock, and to some extent, um, this got me thinking of um some of the other or at least i guess recently when it comes down to the marvel spider-man game where to an extent at least the time that we get to see him interact with peter parker he's kind of like a mentor or a teacher type character which i really appreciate i love those moments and then like near the climax where that comes full circle is really freaking good i really enjoyed it um, James Franco, uh, I'm, again, he, he's not one of my favorites, um, especially with, again, I, 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 he's just one note, but I think it, at this point it kind of makes more sense because he's now focused. I mean, at this point, let's, let's be fair, just playing devil's advocate as much as it, as he is one note, he, he is focused on like his character anyway focused on trying to find out who spider-man is killing spider-man as well as trying to run the oscorp uh you know the company that his father left him however he's very obnoxious when it comes to it and in fact i would say his character is a lot more unlikable this time around which lo and behold that happens that that becomes more apparent with the next movie but anywho, I'm not going to go too much into that. Now, music, going back to, or at least you know, going on to the next thing, not going back, but going on to the next thing, music is really good. They, something that I like, especially with the sequels for um, Spider-Man or Sam Raimi's Spider-Man is the intro. Now, something I noticed right off the bat, like the first time watching these is with each intro, they have a mix of the main theme for Spider-Man as well as it being intertwined with the theme or musical score for the villain. So this time around we have a really nice um, like villain score for Doc Ock which I really enjoyed and this time around especially for the intro um, we, we got something really cool where instead it's basic like kind of CG seeing the backgrounds and seeing images of spider-man we have what looks like painted or comic panels of um, You know some of the, the things that happened in the previous film Which I really enjoyed by the way the illustrations or the, the paintings or whatever is really nice Especially I think one of my favorites had to be the William Defoe face uh, For Green Goblin. I've really enjoyed that. That was actually that it was well done. It looked really creepy um and going to the next topic that actually brings me speaking of villains some of the fights 
Um, I think hands down, especially when it comes to any interaction with Spider-Man, um, the one thing that really kind of, like, I guess sets the bar when it comes down to confrontations between Spider-Man and villains has to be the train scene. For those who have never watched this film, you guys will know what I'm talking about. And we'll be expanding on that in a second because I have something to talk about when it comes down to the extended edition of this film. Now, I have to point it out, CGI is not, it does not, like the first film, it, it, it's not great. <laughs> it's not, it's not the best, but at the same time, it, it does, it, it does what it can, especially for this film. Um, especially with, I'm trying to think, like, the, the worst case. Now, I, yeah, actually, you know, I, playing devil's advocate again, it's a lot better than the first film, but at the same time, it, it just, it doesn't hold up. It doesn't hold up to, you know, to current day. Now, with me talking about, you know, the characters, the music, actually, if anything, quick mention of the story. The story is actually really good, um, which for those who have never watched it, basic concept is Peter's continuing to play, play a, uh, the role as Spider-Man, but at the same time trying to, try, uh, kind of, kind of actually at this point struggling with trying to keep his regular life with the life of Spider-Man, and when his emotions, or at least when issues with MJ or his emotions start getting out of hand, he begins to lose his powers. And at the same time, we get the introduction of Doc Ock, and so on. Now, story itself is actually done really well. It's probably, like, the story itself, especially with the fact that, you know, Spider-Man, or at least Peter Parker, has to deal with not having his powers for, like, a little bit. It, it, it was an interesting kind of twist to the story. Um, and they don't just do it, like, up, up front, like just quickly okay we take away his powers and done there's like two instances where he loses his powers the first uh, there was like one time and then a second time where he loses it like completely and then he you know goes to live his life as you know regular peter until you know obviously i mean it's not even a spoiler like surprise surprise when things go wrong mj gets kidnapped he gets his powers back and then goes and uh, fights Doc Ock. Um, so, now that I've talked about story, characters, CGI, music, I gotta talk about this particular film. So, when I watch this, or at least when it comes down to watching this film, as I mentioned in the previous review for Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, I was able to purchase a five movie package, which was the first film, Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2 and the extended edition, and then the um, Spider-Man 3 and the, I think it was like the director's cut or editor's cut. I think that's what it was. Um, so I'm I, I'm just gonna say because we get some extended scenes and it's extended interactions with a few of the characters. For instance, a extended interaction in the elevator. For those who know what I'm talking about, it's it's probably one of the funniest scenes. Though the funniest line from that interaction they cut out. You guys will probably know what I'm talking about, um, where they're talking about um, Spider-Man suit. Uh, we have a extended interaction with Doc Ock, as well as one of the best, again, one of the best scenes of the film, the, the train fight, has, is a lot, is, is a little bit longer, which I thought was really cool. Again, it's, it's one of my favorite scenes or segments of the film, and they, they actually had some extended content to this movie for that particular fight, and honestly, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the extra content with this. Um, now, and I think if anything, it, it's better than the, the you know the standard edition to it. So, do I like this movie? <laughs> That's the question. Um, 
honestly, I I think if anything, I have to give I have to say this is probably the I guess the best film of the three. If I were if I were to you know say my piece, I mean I'm I, it's my it's my video I can it's it's my opinion though I know people are gonna disagree with me anyways, but here here's here's basically the ranking for all three films. Number two is on the on the top. Number one is second, and number three is the third one. Though I will say that with the director's cut, it does redeem it a little bit. So. If you guys have never seen this film, and who wouldn't, it's freaking Spider-Man, go check it out. It is a lot of fun to watch. I certainly enjoy it. Again, there are certain things that don't hold up. MJ is useless. And... I think that's about it. With that being said, though, I think I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Truly appreciate it. If you guys can, please leave a like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you guys want to follow us on social media, links are in the description down below, as well as check out our daily content and the weekly podcast. With that being said, this is Rob Novacast signing off. Have a good one, and take care. Peace.